Don't be nervous. We've only Don't done 50 nervous. of these. Jesus. We've only done 50 freaking episodes. Actually, this will be our 51st episode, but uh, welcome to Bro History. And if you're tuning in for the first time or the second time or third, please subscribe to the channel. We're trying to grow this channel. If you're listening to this, please rate and review the podcast and also subscribe on whatever podcasting platform that you're using right now. Uh, but yeah, join the YouTube channel. We have some fun content on there. Danny, how's it going? Chill. How about yourself? I'm doing pretty well. So um, let's be professional. Let's get right into the topic. Um, All let's right. Not, let's not bore. <laughs> let's not bore the listeners and viewers with small chatty talk. Like what do you don't you don't want to talk about hamburgers? I don't know what that is, and I don't care to know. <laughs> <laughs> all right go for but, it but uh you decided <laughs> you decided what the topic was going to be today and um it's aircraft yeah. carriers um, that's right and i thought it was a good topic because it's also pretty relevant right now with china and japan and other countries besides the united states um trying to i guess um acquire expand some? <laughs> expand expand their military industrial complex especially in terms of china and japan um, they're trying Definitely. to build aircraft carriers. I believe that China right now is on, I guess, I think they're um, one of their fourth tests. I'm not actually really sure of the story. I've only really read the headlines, but that's why you're yeah. here to explain mm-hmm. all this military stuff to me. But um, <laughs> I, I guess the best thing to do to, to give additional context to people who are watching and listening, uh, why don't we explain, or Danny, why why don't, won't you so cl- kindly explain what an aircraft carrier is? Sure. Uh, well, aircraft carrier is kind of a broad um, term. An aircraft carrier can be any like naval ship or any ship at all that can launch an air vessel. Uh, so there's a really broad category. So we'll talk about the different types of aircraft carriers. But I guess for the purposes of this conversation, um, specifically, an aircraft carrier is a naval military vessel. It's a ship. It is really large. They are the largest ships, the largest naval ships, that is. Uh, They're flat, uh, and that helps to facilitate uh, the ability to take off and land aircraft on that ship. They're like floating islands, uh, like floating airstrips, if you will. And that's generally what an aircraft carrier is. Okay. Yeah. So the four class carrier, I don't want to jump ahead too much, but I know the new four class. We'll talk carriers, about Ford. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. they hold up to 90 aircraft, which is humongous. That's but, correct. Um, before yeah. we get into that, how did aircraft, like, wh- can you go through the history of aircraft carriers? Like when do they start being used? Yeah. I mean, uh, I was actually really, um, surprised when I was doing uh, research for this. Like I'm a nerd for, you know, military tech and, and obviously I'm, I'm pretty well versed in the existing mil, uh, aircraft carriers, but just wanted to dig around and see like, when did we start having them? When did we start using them? Um, and I was surprised to find out that like some of the earliest uh, um, aircraft carriers uh, were coming out of the, uh, the British Royal Navy, um, like in the early 1800s. Uh, though, you know, kind of a stretch to call it an aircraft carrier. It was basically just a battleship that they were that they flew some like balloons and shit off of. Um, but around those times, uh, like mid to uh, late 1800s, I think the most uh, prevalent use of of what we would call a quote aircraft carrier uh, were to launch uh, balloons, um, whether they you know were military spying vessels. Basically, um, it was just easier to do it that way, uh, and you can get in pretty close to enemy territory, and you know. Uh, that's, that's the first, um, use of those. And we were also using them, uh, you know, here in, in the United States as well. Um, I, during the civil war, we, we had a couple of like balloon launched, uh, balloons launched from what we would call an aircraft carrier. When you say balloons, do you mean like blimps or do you mean actual balloons? Like hot air balloons, you know, like okay. uh, they, they use them to like drop bombs or, uh, for recon, uh, I mean, we had, a, a the, the North had a union army balloon corps, uh, which is kind of a funny thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, they use them to like drop bombs and, and, uh, and spy and stuff like that. Yeah. When, when you say drop bombs, you mean like throwing bombs out of a basket, right? Yeah. Like literally throwing bombs out of like manually tossing a, a bomb overboard onto people. <laughs> That's convenient. Yeah. So, I mean, why... How does people start using, or maybe a better question would be like, why are aircraft carriers important to naval supremacy? 
Sure. Yeah. I mean, that's a really big question, but I think uh, what's important to note is that air superiority has been so instrumental to um, to modern warfare. Pretty much, you know, I'd argue World War One, but definitely World War Two. Air superiority is absolute key, uh, and what an aircraft carrier does and why it's so important and and you know things like that is is because you're able to take airplanes anywhere around the world and legally speaking uh you can park your aircraft carrier up to 14 miles out of the coast that's in international waters and you can place airplanes strategically anywhere and you know for fun fact i think it's something like 70% of the world lives within the coastline, like within a hundred miles of a coastline. So the strategic importance of an aircraft carrier is you can have an airstrip anywhere, right? So we're, we're saying that air superiority is super important for modern warfare. Here's the thing that facilitates air superiority. It is the platform, the jumping off point by which you do that. So they're just like mobile bases, essentially. It's a way to kind of swing. Well, I guess in America's case, is it's the easiest way to swing your dick around. Yeah, I mean, in anyone's case. Uh, yeah. And so, you know, we can look at, you know, some more historical uses of it. And I think, you know, there there were plenty of battles going on, you know, that used aircraft carriers, whether they're like primitive air, aircraft carriers. But I think the the one that strikes my mind a lot is um, is Japan during World War II. And they actually had 10 aircraft carriers, which they had more than anyone else. They were the US of World War II as, as far as like the Navy was concerned. So they had 10 of these uh, aircraft carriers and they actually formed six of them in a carrier strike group and sent them to Hawaii. And that's that was the jumping off point for Pearl Harbor. Basically, they didn't fly those planes all the way over from Japan. I don't think that would be feasibly possible. They didn't, and they they didn't, they didn't fly them from Tokyo? N- no. <laughs> no, they weren't. Uh, and they weren't flying them over from, you know, uh, little islands uh, in, in between. They literally sent over aircraft carriers. And that's how they were able to execute that that first strike uh, on the U.S. So it, it's super important, um, I think, to, to, to think about. What was, can you recall like the first major, um, the first major aircraft, um, aircraft carrier battle during World War II? Um, hmm. I know. So unfortunately, I, I don't think I can name a specific battle, but I can say that I know that aircraft carrier groups did clash, uh, between the U S and, and Japan, um, uh, in the Pacific. Uh, so I, I don't have any specific ones. Um, I, I'm not sure if you know of any. Well, something I was going to bring up was um, the Doolittle Raid. And the Doolittle Raid was probably one of the first, I'm mean, not one of the first times, but it was um, in the early years one. of yeah. World the Yeah, the early years of World War II. And um, do you know the story of the Doolittle Raid? Or no, hit me. The, the um, It was, um, I believe, in 1942. So April 18th, 1942, um, the U.S. was by all, not losing the war, however, they got some Japan during early parts of the war got some lucky shots on the U S um, they mm-hmm. effectively took over the Philippines. They took over, um, they bombed Pearl Harbor, obviously um, right. they were winning the first initial battles. Um, right. So there was a plan cooked up. We like, we basically the U S wanted to hit Japan and not just hit Japan in a battle. They wanted to show Japan that they could hit them at home. Like they, right. were, their their citizens and their capital is vulnerable. So they flew a a aircraft carrier out. I believe um, the USS Hornet uh, deep in the Western Pacific Ocean, and um, they bombed Tokyo with some B twenty five bombers. <laughs> they didn't firebomb them. It was more of like a. It was more of. It wasn't like the later bombing raids in World War II where they annihilated cities and, you know, the death toll was in the hundreds of thousands. It was more just like, you can hit us, we can hit you type of bombing raid. And then mm. the bombers, they all landed down. They were landed in Russia afterwards, just because they didn't mm-hmm. have enough fuel, obviously, to get back. However, right. it's just a very interesting. It, it was. I think it might might have been one of the first major times an aircraft carrier was used by the U.S. Um, by the U.S. Navy, 
So that's just fun little a fun little story I wanted to throw in there. That's really um, interesting. Yeah, but I mean now aircraft carriers are so much different than they used to be. Um, can you can you talk about the difference between I guess earlier model aircraft carriers and you know what they look like today? Totally. Um, so I mean I guess when I think the uh, Honto or Honcho was one of the first commissioned. Uh, like purpose built aircraft carriers, and that was by Japan. And that's when they started deciding, okay, we're not just going to land it on the deck of like a battleship or something like that. We're going to build a ship whose sole purpose is to, you know, land and, and recover air, uh, and launch aircrafts onto. Uh, and it was just basically a flat surface, you know, uh, a, a jumping off point from there. Uh, a little later on, uh, they started developing. Um, uh, uh, hydraulic launch systems, so compressed gas. Uh, now, obviously, you know an aircraft carrier, even the largest aircraft carriers, you know, aren't as long as an airfield, right? So you have to pick up a lot of speed uh, in order, uh, relatively quickly, in order to gain enough lift to fly an airplane. That's just basic physics, right? Um, and also, fun fact: most of the time, the reason uh, why they take off, they take off forward. Uh, and a lot of aircraft carriers must be traveling forwards in order to like take off airplanes in order to get enough like wind speed, it's basically traveling with the, the, um, with the airplane. Anyhow, uh, so they, they started developing those launch systems, which basically grab the, the wheels of the, uh, of the airplane and propel it forward in, in short fashion. Uh, the British uh, had developed a neat little technique of doing what's called a ski jump. So you get this little lip at the front, basically like a little uh, uh, a little ramp to to do an ollie off of, um, and that helped a lot with with the distances that were required to get an airplane off you know off the ground. Um, and then now uh, the most prevalent systems, um, you've got these really large flat topped systems. And they put a control tower kind of like asymmetrically off to the side so that they can see and it doesn't impede on you know the, the runway. Um, and they use, oh, geez, I'm forgetting on this one. They use steam-powered um, uh, uh, prop uh, propulsion systems. Uh, it's an, I forget the technical term for this. I'll look it up later. Um, but basically, uh, they'll take steam uh, that's, that's created on the ship uh, and they build it up and they basically blast off um, the the airplane in a similar fashion. Um, if you're familiar with any of the videos uh, and, and anyone watching on YouTube, like go ahead and check out a couple of uh, videos of, of um, airplanes launching off of the uh, of, off of aircraft carriers. You'll see a bunch of steam kind of going everywhere. And that's what that's for. Unfortunately, uh, those steam powered ones, while incredibly effective at, at launching airplanes, they cause a lot of stress on the plane. Uh, and that's because the the way that the physics is set up is that the, the initial jolt to get it going is the most powerful kick. It's not like a steady stream. And it, it puts a lot of stress on both the airframe and the launch system itself. So, you know, there's a lot of maintenance that needs to happen, uh, you know, for both the plane and the uh, launch systems. But thankfully, modern aircraft carriers are basically floating cities. Um, they have the capability to run, you know, pretty much indefinitely. Uh, you know, at, at least on their own power, nuclear powered uh, ships that we have now um, are able to run for 25 years without getting new fuel. Of course, they have to stop and get supplies every now and again, but they definitely don't need to refuel. Um, and uh, what's crazy about them is that they have everything you need. A thousand people live on it, uh, live and work on it uh, for like a year at a time. They have flight decks. They have um, uh, quarters, of course. They have uh, um, places where you can fix things, so like a, like basically like garages for the airplanes, and and they've got all the tools. They have all the ordnance, you know, so uh, bombs and missiles and all kinds of crazy shit. They have plenty of jet fuel on board. Uh, they're 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 crazy. Uh, they they're literally floating cities, and you know, in addition to to being um, used for war purposes, they're also sometimes used for humanitarian reasons, just because it's an easy platform, um, you know, to to deliver aid from. Yeah. And, and I think something to take note that's important is that, all right, so the new aircrafts, and I know I'm jumping ahead right now, but I think it's an sure. important thing to distinguish. So the new, the, the, the Gerald Ford class, um, that's Ford the class, carrier. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Gerald Ford class. So that's the first carrier that's been built in the past 40 years, I believe. Yeah. So yeah. these carriers right now, these carriers right now that you're talking about, they were developed in the set like sixties and seventies, right? That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. And, okay. uh, 
Yeah, I mean, and they've been in service for a really, really long time. And and the one of the biggest reasons for creating a new class of supercarrier is, you know, quite literally, you know, we've we've modernized our military to a point where the being the damn ships have eight nuclear reactors on them and they still can't generate enough power for all the gizmos and gadgets that that we're putting on them, you know. So they wanted to read it redevelop uh, the ship so that it, it's, you know, energy efficient and, and has the capabilities to deliver enough wattage to just all of the electronics, you know? Yeah. And let's be clear about what, what they're using nuclear for. Um, they're using it for, for energy reasons. So for propulsion, ship, for propulsion. Not, Correct. Not like when you say nuclear, I automatically jump into warheads. You know what I mean, <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they, if they stored some nuclear warheads on board, you know, for the planes to use. Um, I wouldn't be surprised at that, but yeah, you're absolutely right. When, when we say nuclear, we mean, uh, a nuclear power, like nuclear propulsion. So it, the science behind it isn't actually super crazy. Once you get past the part of like, you know, how nuclear, t- um, how nuclear fusion works, uh, fission, excuse me, how nuclear fission works. Um, it basically just generates a bunch of heat, right? And they use that heat to boil water, and I guess technically speaking, you can say that aircraft carriers are steam powered uh, because those that steam turns uh, uh, propellers, excuse me, t- turns turbines, uh, which generate electricity that then turn the, the actual propellers to get it to move and also power everything on the ship. Um, they also generate enough energy to, to, to desalinate something like 200,000 gallons of water a day, uh, which is absolutely insane. Um, you need a large amount of energy to to desalinate water you have to literally boil water that's that's how they do it um yeah but these things are are very very well well equipped and really really well put together uh really well thought together and it's it's i'm really excited for these ford class supercarriers just because they're they're i wouldn't say they're a game changer but they're definitely like you know keeping with the times and, and and really you know staying relevant uh in modern warfare so so do all I may have missed this. Do all aircraft carriers, or at least modern ones in service, do they all have nuclear? Nope. Reactors, or just okay. Nope. So we've got eleven, all nuclear. Okay. Uh, we They're have all the nuclear. Yeah, we have the largest uh, um, fleet of of supercarriers in the world, and and maybe I'll sh- I should point out, supercarrier isn't a technical term, but I happen to really like it because it's very specific. It's like the largest class of of aircraft carriers because there's a lot of Anything could be called an aircraft carrier. A small boat that holds a helicopter is technically an aircraft carrier. So when I say super carrier, I think it's very descriptive. It means like the, f- the giant floating cities that hold like 80, 90 planes on board and 1,000 people and a bunch of ordnance and stuff like that. Um, so to get back to your question, no, uh, not all aircraft carriers are are um, are powered by nuclear. I think most of them are actually diesel. Uh, the only other country that has a nuclear-powered um, aircraft carrier is France, believe it or not. Uh, and it's a really good one. Um, and I forget the actual name of it, but the, the story behind it is funny. They named it after a guy, uh, like a military guy in France who was famous for saying that um, aircraft are like a fun toy, but not really of importance in, in warfare. <laughs> so it's a little ironic that it's named after a dude who doesn't believe in air in aircrafts for, uh, for military purposes. Um, just a fun fact. So, it, but that's an important point, though, uh, that you bring up, Henry. Um, the fact that we're the only ones that have um, nuclear-powered, uh, you know, aircraft carriers is really, really important um, because, like I said, these things can float around in the sea, you know, for twenty-five years without without refueling, like at all, um, and that's super strategically important because all these other diesel ships and all these other, you know, uh, other, like turbo electric ships, they they need to make port more frequently. They need to resupply, you know, and that's uh, that's you know that puts you at a vulnerability, you know that that puts you at a disadvantage, especially in a in an actual you know uh, uh, wartime. Yeah, I think it's it's I think it's what the 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 Truman that is in the Persian Gulf right now, like right over the Strait of Hormuz, that's just staring I think at so. Iran. I th- yeah, I was actually trying to look up before our call, like where the hell are all of them? And I was having a little bit of a hard time and I landed on some nefarious websites and I'm like, all right, please don't put me on some list somewhere. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think you might be right about Truman being in um, 
you know, basically chilling over uh, in, in the Straits of Hormuz looking at Iran. Um, another one is uh, Gerald R. Ford. That one's stationed in Japan. Uh, and that's the one that we send over to, to North Korea whenever they're acting up. And they quiet down as soon as one comes over for very, very good reasons. You know, it's kind of funny because like, it seems that I think eventually we're going to be leading to peace. I mean, I think we're on a peaceful path with North Korea, at least better than before. And um, I and feel you, like those uh, those uh, carriers are, are yeah. more for China, more more to uh, you know thumb thumb your nose at China rather than um, you know. Uh, well, obviously they're there for North Korea as well, but now they're we there don't have for the pretext to have any carriers. Like they're they're yeah. literally there for anyone. They're there for Asia. They're there, they're <laughs> they're there for any Asian that acts up. To- but also Russia, you know, and also Iran, and and literally anywhere where there's water, like anywhere on a coast, that's what they're built for. The projection of power that you get out of this, I mean, is insane. So some interesting stats about this is like. Uh, Modern aircraft carrier like crewmen, seamen that 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 operate the aircraft carriers can launch something like two aircrafts at the same time while simultaneously landing a third, right? So it's like juggling airplanes on a moving ship, and in their top speed, how many they can do? They can launch like two hundred sorties uh, per day. That's that's like flying planes day and night in and out real quick. They do want, they can do one every 30 seconds uh, uh, when they're well-timed. These guys are incredibly well-trained. So in addition to these, the, the super carriers being incredibly badass by themselves, the people who, who, pi- who man them are, you know, quite literally some of the most organized people in the world. I mean, you've flown before, right? You know, how, how many hours do you spend, you know, sitting on, on the tarmac waiting for like air traffic, right? Um, usually like 40 minutes, 20 to 40 minutes if, if you're yeah. lucky. Right. And that's just to take off, you know, a, a normal civilian passenger plane. We should, I, you know, I'm, uh, we should petition the U S Navy to just run all of our, <laughs> all of our airfields that do a much better job at it. Um, at least the guys who, who run the aircraft carriers. <laughs> it, it'd be another, it'd be another reason to, uh, increase the military budget. <laughs> yeah well <laughs> i mean the I, military I, operated all of our airports i mean I, I i'm not sure where does air traffic control fit under in the in the branches of government um i'm not actually sure i can't yeah. tell you that i know they're a government something. run um organization for sure but uh anyway my point is that these guys can take off and land this shit crazy and you know i want to underscore the, the, the pilots are flying a 70,000 pound airplane plus, you know, at a, a pretty high speed and landing on a, on a small platform in the middle of the ocean while it's moving, you know, that's a, it's a feat that you have to have some fucking balls. Let's just put it that way to do this shit. You know, modern jet fighters, mo- modern pilots have to actually accelerate, like put on the, uh, uh, the gas as they touch down because they need to grab the arresting gear the the like strings that grab the airplane to like make it stop um so as they're like descending and about to touch down they literally put on the gas again can you imagine doing that shit it's it's insane so like um tom only tom cruise can do it yeah i mean he's a thetan level nine he can do anything he wants or or uh fox mcleod (laughs) you get that reference um that's the Star Fox guy, right? Yeah. The mm-hmm. new Super Smash Brothers is out. I know. I've been playing it. Yeah. You you have a Switch? Yeah, dude. Do you? Oh, yeah. You have one in your living room, don't you? I have a Switch, but the only game I have for it is Zelda, and that's the only game I've, I've played for it. But I did I did get a chance to play the new Super Smash Brothers, and um, it's Bro really History cool. Approved? Yeah, Bro History it, Approved. Yeah, <laughs> I, I really I liked it. I, I, have, I honestly have not played the last two Smash Brothers. The one since the GameCube came out, I haven't played mm-hmm. any of them. But this one was really fun, so I'm not sure if it was like a big jump from the, the last couple that came out or or what. But it was it's a, it's, it's it's dope. It's dope. But I heard I heard um, the online play sucks. 
Yeah, but it's Nintendo. They do online really shittily. It's fun when you've got people that you know that you're playing online with. It's like meh if you're playing randos online. Yeah. The thing is, though, is that like I have like four friends. I have four or five friends max. So I don't. <laughs> I have only have people. four friends, and you're one of them. <laughs> yeah, you're one of them too. Um, so I have like four to five friends um, on a good day, and um, I don't really have that many people to play video games with. I mean, e- so even I still, it's it's a, even still, it's it's like a, a good couch game too. You know, so if you have people over, it's fun to play with other people. Um, but I'm saying I don't have people over because I don't have very many friends. All right, because you're lame. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> so it defeats the purpose of getting a party game. All right, I think that's why I, I play, the only it. game I play is Zelda. The only game I play is Zelda because I can, you know, I can invest 250 hours by myself playing it. Yeah, I feel you. That, I have that game too. It was so you're much the fun. only human contact I get, Danny. You and the <laughs> guest I have on this show are this only the only times I speak to another human. I just, actually just locked in that room. <laughs> I don't speak unless it's on this podcast. And the only so the only people <laughs> I speak to is Danny and usually journalists or historians who and, and when I talk to them, we're usually talking about a very depressing topic. However, <laughs> let's continue the actual podcast and continue <laughs> with the so aircraft carriers. So sorry <laughs> to interrupt. All right. So, um, so where we're at right now is that we are so the advancements of initially of of the first aircraft carriers that we've been building um we went through from like archaic kind of just ships that planes landed on to these um huge expensive aircraft super carriers that have hydraulic systems that launch off jets um, how, how many jets did they launch at a time or, or how, how fast you said 30 seconds? Yeah. So jet? they could simultaneously launch two while landing one, or they can launch one every 30 seconds or over a course of a day, they can do two to 200 to, to 240, uh, sorties per day and sorties just like taking off an airplane, uh, which okay. is, is incredible. So, and Japan was the first country to, to have a, they had they had one time had the biggest fleet of aircraft carriers. That's right, but unfortunately, right. not unfortunately. I guess it was a good thing for. Fortunately, we the wrecked them. In World War II. <laughs> yeah. Fortunately, the Japanese Empire fell with that. Their ships fell as well because Japan. Or this is actually a better question. Um, it's kind of a good segue. Um, what other countries have air like these super carriers? Mm, not many. <laughs> uh, so I, I mentioned. Um, I mentioned that uh, France has a nuclear powered one. Uh, the UK has one. I don't. It's not nuclear powered. Uh, still an advanced uh, uh, aircraft carrier, but it's it's just not it's not on the same level. Uh, Russia has one. Uh, China uh, just acquired one not too long ago. Uh, that was an interesting story, actually. They they um, China. <laughs> they bought and yeah, old- China. China, so, China bought. I don't want. I'm sorry. I, I'm, no, no, I don't no, want to interrupt no, you. Go no ahead. worries. Uh, they bought so, a Soviet. They bought an old Soviet one, right? That's that's right. They bought it from the Ukraine, and they set up this like shell company, uh, and they claimed to want to buy it so that they could set up like a floating casino. Yeah, I read uh, that. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so now they have one of their old shitty ones, and um, and it's old and it's shitty, and and uh, one dead giveaway is that it has the ski jump at the end. You know, uh, the purpose of the ski jump was the the. The platform was too short and you don't have enough, like a, a good enough launch system to not have a ski jump. So like it's a dead giveaway. It sucks. And what sucks even more is that like, obviously they're retrofitting it for like to have modern technology in it, to be able to hold, house some, some modern airplanes. But I mean, these, nobody, they, they got them under false pretenses. So like nobody's coming over to teach them how to do this, you know, like their their pilots are simultaneously learning how to fl- how to land on aircraft carriers by themselves and creating the training manuals on how to do it. So they're having a hard time. I heard they, they you know, it's all classified, but the rumors are that they're not they're not getting along very well with it. Yeah, there was an article that was released by the Economic Times. Um, I mean, it's that. um China is stepping up. They're they're expanding their pilot recruitment program, so they're they're like they're doubling their recruitment effort and and pilots that right. are working on pot- uh, potential aircraft carriers in the future. Right, right. 
Um, but I mean, again, you have to have some fucking balls to fly it, to fly a jet and try and land that shit on, on a relatively small surface in the middle of the ocean while it's moving. That's it's, I can't underscore how crazy that is. Like, so we, how many do we have right now? 11? We have 11. 10 of them are the Nimitz class, the, the, the former class. And one is a Gerald R. Ford class. That's the uh, SS Gerald R. Ford. Um, and we've got, I think, another three on order. Two of them are unnamed. And one of them, surprisingly enough, is going to be called the Enterprise. But we already had uh, an aircraft carrier called the Enterprise. And as a matter of fact, it was the flagship for the Enterprise Enterprise class of aircraft carrier. Um, so I wonder how that's going to work out. But I know that we don't actually use that other one. They scrapped it. It's It's being dismantled. Um, but yeah, I know you can't rename Stargate a ship. That's Enterprise? like, <laughs> yeah, I think that's what they were going for. <laughs> Let's name it the Millennium Falcon. Dude, I'm down. <laughs> I'm down. The next aircraft carrier, they, they named the Millennium Falcon. Or, uh, was it, uh, in, in Halo, was it the Hammer of Dawn? Was that giant like ship? I think it was called the Hammer of Dawn. I'm not a, I'm not a virgin. I don't play Halo. Yeah, you know, all joking. you weebs that that are watching this on YouTube, please comment in the Zelda. comment section. <laughs> um, Let us know if we fucked it up. <laughs> I don't know what they. I I played Halo many years ago. I haven't played it in a long time. I don't remember the names of it. Um. So what we have about eleven right now. We talked about where they're stationed right now, like where they're stationed. Um, Japan, uh, Norfolk, Virginia, um, San Diego. Um, Qatar, Qatar, right? Qatar, Qatar. I don't know. Qatar, yeah, Qatar, Qatar, Qatar. So many different ways to say it. <laughs> um, there's one in the Persian Gulf. Um, I wish I had a map of all, like the locations of it, but I guess they're yeah. moving, right? So yeah, and also I, I don't think that the United States wants everybody to know where their supercarriers are. Uh, yeah, <laughs> not but that you know can fuck for, with them. We know, yeah, we we know they're in certain areas to obviously yeah. have the, yeah. the 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 uh, the gaze of uh uncle sam on you at all times for strategically important areas <laughs> um how how much does an aircraft carrier cost or let's just talk in terms of super care let's just talk super in carriers. terms of uh, super carriers because i think that's what people are obviously thinking of like the big ones that we're we've been obviously podcasting about for the past half hour <laughs> but how much do we how much do they cost I would like very much to buy these as aircraft carriers. I want How to much? buy one. <laughs> I want to uh, have one. So one Gerald R. Four class aircraft carrier costs about thirteen billion dollars. Billion with a B. Uh, and the entire program cost for um, fiscal year twenty eighteen is thirty seven point three billion. That's really expensive. But I do want to bring it back to one of our old episodes on the F-35, and it doesn't even come close. So one F-35 is approximately 82, uh, excuse me, $89 million, so million with an M. However, their entire program cost is $1.5 trillion. So... The aircraft carriers are a good buy, <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah, um, one point one point five trillion dollars for a plane program that is, I mean, with all honesty, I don't know. I think we kind of had the same opinions on the F thirty five. I think yeah. you probably are a little bit. It's a I'm, nice, I'm it's a very, nice plane, but it's it's just not worth one point five trillion dollars. Yeah, you're you're a little bit more. You're, you're obviously. Um, you, you see the the pros in it, mm. where I don't see the pros in it. However, I mean you're a lot more savvy with the stuff than I am. I just kind of like when you you lose me at one point five trillion dollars. <laughs> I think you lose an, you lo you lose anyone yeah. at one point five trillion dollars. Dude, that's the most expensive military thing ever, like ever. Especially is it the fact that they fall out of the sky? Yeah, like, I mean it, it's just yeah. The, I mean. Obviously, that they're not is, the first planes to fall out the sky, but they're definitely yeah, the most expensive planes to fall out the sky. <laughs> they're the most expensive plane to fall out of the sky, and that's yeah. why it's kind of that's why it, it pisses you off as a taxpayer every single time one of those planes 
um, one of these incredibly expensive jet planes, fifth generation jet planes, uh, falls out of the sky. So yeah. it's, it's frustrating as yeah. a taxpayer. Yeah. Um, and then you find out, like, obviously it's for different reasons, but there's a, um, you know, that the helmet itself is four hundred thousand dollars. Yep, half, like almost half a million you know, dollars for the you, helmet. <laughs> it lets you see behind your head and all this crazy dude it's stuff, actually it's a pretty really, dope it's really got like cool ar and shit like that but mm. which is which is pretty cool but we, we talked about it like the main you know the main selling point with, yeah with the f-35 is um it's a multi-use plane it can do a bunch of different things but in an air fight in an actual dog fight an f-35 pilot would get killed by a russian pilot yeah It'll get spanked by a Sukhoi, not not even MIG Sukhois, Sukhois are, are the it, air supremacy. It will get killed. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's frustrate it, that that's frustrating. But I mean, you what, know what? I'll, what I'll report. I'll report back because you know, um, in a couple of days here, uh, the new Ace Combat comes out. We're c- coming back to games here. Uh, the new Ace Combat comes out, and I'm pretty excited for it because I'm obviously a nerd for airplanes. Uh, so I'll uh, I'll fly around in the F-35 and I'll get into a fight with a with a Sukhoi. 37 or something like that and and we'll see <laughs> i'll let i'll, I'll is let that you know a realistic simulator uh is that a realistic i think simulator? it's it's the most famous like jet fighter uh like program um, video game available so i'd imagine it's pretty realistic is it more realistic to star fox than star fox oh yeah i mean star fox is you know uh um what do they call it what's the fuck what jet? i did there i brought it yeah. back yeah that's that's a callback uh, no, those things don't even exist. So, I don't know. Maybe it's realistic. It's just we don't have them yet. <laughs> when foxes can fly, then talk to me and ask me. All right. Yep. Um, so, anything else that you need to say about these uh, aircraft carriers as we hit the 40-minute mark? Yep. Uh, I'd like to say that, you know, we do these episodes on military tech. And, you know, on occasion, I praise United States military tech on occasion, like the F-35, for example, I shit on it, you know, Um, but this is this is not the podcast to shit on it. We are leaps and bounds ahead of everyone for this particular platform. And it's such an important platform uh, for projecting power around the world. You know, our Navy is is basically flagshipped by these things. And we have the most powerful navy on the planet. Uh, you know these the the these aircraft carriers are incredible. The flight decks of them combined, you know, if you add up all the planes and all the ships uh, um, that that support it, like battleships and submarines and things like that, because they don't go by themselves. Uh, if you put it all together, just the carrier groups, it's the fourth largest navy in the world. Just the aircraft carrier groups. Uh, we are so far ahead of everyone. Um, it's it's interesting, and we should pay attention to countries like China, countries like India, um, and others that are trying to build aircraft carriers. But they're not even close. Not 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 even by a long shot. It'll be another decade before they can even figure out how to throw them, you know, uh, as nuclear in the first place. So we we've got this shit on lock. <laughs> Yeah, I the the projections I saw they're trying to, I guess I think build six carriers by two thousand. I might be making this up. And I think I saw, I think yeah, six by two thousand like thirty, which is uh, probably a tall order. But um, I'll leave it at that. Let's wrap this thing up. Word. Um. All right, everyone. Thank you for for joining us today. Um. Make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're watching it. If you're listening to it, go to the YouTube channel and subscribe to it. Um, even if you don't like YouTube, just go to the YouTube channel and subscribe to it. Um, also rate and review the podcast. We've been getting a lot of reviews and thank you for all the positive ones and even the negative ones as well. <laughs> it's nice to hear feedback from both sides. Um, believe me, if you look at the YouTube comments, there's a lot meaner ones than the ones. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot meaner stuff written on YouTube um, than on podcast reviews for the most part. I don't know if you've, if you've observed that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a lot more polarized on the, in the YouTube world. Well, there's, there's a lot more. There's no, there's, there's, there's no comment section on every, uh, on every podcast, but there is on every YouTube video. So. Yeah. Well, YouTube videos are just more, 
accessible. I, I guess more accessible. They're more searchable. Yeah. Like podcast, audio podcasts aren't aren't served to you via recommendations in general. Yeah. So we, so some random person is going to get your YouTube video and, and they're going to be like, what did you say about the F-35? Or what did you say about the Iranian Iraq war? And you get some really bizarre stuff written on your YouTube channel. So that's why we need our normal listeners to support us there because, um, you know, we, we, we get, you know, we, we, we <laughs> obviously the bizarre comments are interesting and we're not going to cancel them or we're not going to, we're not going to censor uh, them. them. We're not going to like censor that. them we're because not, we're for we're not first little, amendment. Right. We're not like, <laughs> But we're not 10 year olds no. who are sensitive. So it's, it, but uh, there's some weird ones. Um, but then again, I guess we kind of open it up since we post some weird videos. Yeah, that's true. That, um, yeah. I'm and, sure uh, some I of it is deserving, the right? <laughs> <laughs> the, the video I posted today, um, I posted a video called um, Flat Earth. Oh, God. Um, yeah. The formula for fl- the flat earth is true. I forget what I even named it. Yeah. <laughs> it it's, I, but I, it was a video I posted called um, Flat Earth Proven. I'm sure yes, that got a lot and of And I hits. have a formula. <laughs> I haven't checked it yet. Did but you talk about the heat? You know, the heat? No, I just, it's like, <laughs> it's just, a, it's a stupid video where I just have a formula. I have a sheet. <laughs> Of, uh, I, I, don't give it away don't give it away just, just drew if you want to if you okay. want to know henry's uh flat earth theories uh you're gonna have to watch the video on youtube like share and subscribe yeah, go to the youtube <laughs> channel and like it subscribe to the channel like the video share it with a Hit friend that little bell and, um, icon. get the word out get the word out there about the flat earth it's true yep. we live on a earth and um i know the mystery of the uh, malaysian flight that disappeared yeah I know the mystery. I've, I I know where it went. You're gonna have to find. You're gonna have to watch it to find out. <laughs> if you want to know, that's that's intriguing, right? Yeah, yeah. I want to know. If you want to find out what happened to that those those uh that poor flight that poor flight like it's a <laughs> like it's a noun <laughs> that poor flight in uh, Malaysia, then go to the YouTube channel and subscribe to it and look at the video I did on flat Earth. And this will probably be released in like four days. So there'll probably be more videos above that. However, check out that specific video if you want to know the truth about the flat earth. The flat earth. I have the documents. All right. I'm out. See ya. Peace.